Good evening, everyone. My name is Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and this is Learn Roblox. Basically, it's the developer's page, and anybody can get to it. Just go to wiki.roblox.com. Link is going to be in the description down below. You can absolutely go through and follow the tutorials. In fact, this tutorial that I'm doing is going to be in the description down below if you wanted to follow along. So there's one section inside the tutorials that um, we have to do first. It says, make your obby colorful. Thank you so much for the subscribe. Um, in order to do this, we have to do the getting started guide. So let's head over there. And you can follow along if you'd like. Um, this is the whole reason I'm doing it is because I don't like reading. I like watching videos. So I'm gonna make a videos about the tutorials so you don't have to read. Uh, sounds like a good trade off to me. Anyhow, um, the first part is kind of self-explanatory. If you don't know how to install uh, Roblox Studio or if you don't know how to log in, then you're probably gonna want to read the first part, but here we go. I'm gonna try and keep it under 10 to 15 minutes like normal. Uh, it's probably gonna go over. Getting started, welcome. If you landed here, we assume that you've never built a game in, with Roblox, but don't worry. We'll get you started as quickly as possible. In this tutorial, you're gonna do the following. Install Roblox Studio, play a sample obstacle course or an obby, build your own ob obby from scratch. And there's actually a link if you need to download it yourself, but um, we're not gonna go there. We're actually gonna skip, 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 and this is for Mac and for everything else. So, uh, this shows just where you're playing your own obby, and it says stop playing obby. So, here we go. Use Roblox Studio to design your own one. It says the first thing you wanna do is go to create new project. If you're coming off the desktop, then yes, you're gonna to wanna to hit the uh, new uh, file, new project, and start up a new one. Don't worry about saving stuff, and it even says here um, somewhere. Anyhow. Um, that's enough reading portion. We are going to switch over to the actual studio portion right now. Fade. There we go. I'm going to continue to read. You can watch on your own screen if you'd like. Um, here we go. Use the Roblox Studio Design an Obby. Create a new project. Now that you know what an Obby is, you can create your own. First, click on the X of the Obby at the, X, at the top of the template, blah, 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 file close. Don't worry about saving any of your changes if you're asked. Now, start a new project and single click the base plate template. As you can see here, I have my base plate template. Good. Uh, close any extra windows. I'm not going to do so because this is the way I like it set up, so I'm going to keep it here. It's your choice. Um, it says to close the game window, close the toolbox window, close the properties window. And then it says to come up here and use the explorer. So if you click on view and click on explore, it should show you um, the actual window, which is over here. This is the explorer window. Does that actually show up if I'm... Yeah, over here. This is the explorer window. Then this, this shows you everything that you need to know inside the game. Basically, all the parts that you see um, are over here somewhere, or the stuff that you can't see, such as store items or replicated storage, that's in here as well. So, uh, okay, it says to click on the little arrow for boop, like that. Um, uh, click on the small arrow next to the workspace in the Explorer window. This will expand the workspace tree. Click on the base plate to select it. Uh, press the delete button on your keyboard. Oh gosh, hold on, I lost focus. There we go, delete. Oh no, my base plate is gone. And now it says to create a starting position. In Roblox, where a player appears in the world uh, at the start of a game or after restarting is called a spawn location. I thought it was called a spawn point. Uh, without a designated place for your player to start, they might spawn in the middle of nowhere and fall to their doom. Ooh, not good. To create a new spawn point, um, in the Explorer window, hover over workspace, right here and click the little plus button right out beside it. Click. Now, does that show up as well? I don't even I don't even know if that if that shows up. Does that show up? It does, but it's like all weirdish. Wait a second. Can you not see my 3D view is like disappeared. Why did the 3D view disappear? That's crazy. Oh, oh. Is that using part of the graphics? Oh, I guess that's why. Okay. Well, let's just type out spawn and see what happens. Spawn, location, and click, just like that. And now you can't see the 3D, okay. Well, that is crazy. Studio, game capture three, cut. There we go, cut it back, there we go, okay. So apparently the uh, little plus window, I I'm going to try and avoid that. I might just use the right click, but I think the right click might even throw it off some. No, nope, right click doesn't throw it off. What about the plus? Let's hit the plus button. 
Nope, you're only going to see one or the other. Okay, anyhow. There's the spawn location. Alright, uh, scroll to the top until you find spawn location, click on it. Um, the new spawn location will be created in the exact center of your camera view within the game editor window, just like so. Uh, to move the camera, you can use WSAD, WSAD, we have explained this in the last one, or you can use the arrow keys up, down, left, right, up, up, down, and left, right, that's a... Uh, or you can use Q to go down, E to go up, Shift to change the camera speed. So if we wanted to move slowly, just hold Shift, let go of Shift, and you go normal speed, just like that. Now it's kind of hard to tell, but I mean, it just looks like it's growing and getting bigger and smaller, but that's... That's relative, because you don't have anything else to compare it to. Uh, the right mouse will turn the camera, and the mouse scroll wheel will go in and out. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. F will focus on the selected part. So what that means is, say we're like way over here, right? In the Explorer window, click on Spawn and then press F, and it'll go right to whatever you've clicked on. Uh, if the camera doesn't move, first click Focus inside the game er area window. That just means this area right here. Uh, if you can still see it, yeah, you can still see it. Good. All right, publish the pr uh, publish the project. It is good to practice publishing your game at least once or twice an hour. Um, that used to be true. I don't know. Let's see. Publish to Roblox. Uh, can you see? You can't see the other one. Oh, good, because you can't see my other projects. I'm just going to type in new place, and we're going to call this uh, Codes Obby Test. Uh, description is going to just be test and create place. Boom. Done. And upload is complete. And next, uh, it says sell your gear, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to click done. We're done. All right, so now that's published. So now if I go to file publish it should just publish every single time I don't I don't have to create a new place but I have created a new place called codes obby test blah 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 so um, back over to our online security or sorry the publishing product uh, project uh, publishing allows other players on Roblox to play your game as well online security before you publish your game it is important to turn off experimental mode when you become more skilled at creating games in Roblox this mode can be useful for experimenting on games but it's ultimately unstable for social community play also games in experimental mode aren't allowed on the Roblox front page which means that you can't get top of the line if you make something awesome so uh, let's turn off experimental mode. One of the main reasons for this is what's called exploits. They use external programs to inject code onto your game and do all kinds of bad exploiting. Don't call it hacking, okay, because they're not really hackers. They're using external programs that somebody else, a probably real hacker or a real programmer, made and they're now using it. Which is also called being a script kitty or a scripter. I guess scripter is kind of a not good term because technically I'm I script so okay let's move on <laughs> select the home tab right up here Boop, like that um, go down to game settings right here Boop, like that oh you cannot see this can you I'm gonna have to add a window hang tight one second add a window capture add a window capture yes that's going to be the uh, second Roblox Studio Capture, just like that. Here, let's fade that in so you can see it. There we go. Okay, so this is the actual window that we're seeing. Uh, and it says, under the game settings, in the security window, under experimental mode, and click off. So click on security, experimental, off. Okay, this is the same thing as saying filter enabled on. Okay. So filter enabled on is experimental mode off. Uh, filter enabled off is experimental mode on. So there was a change that was done probably about four, five, six months ago, and they changed the, the noun or the wording of it. So that's what they're talking about. So now we should be able to close that. Let me go back over just to make sure that I don't, yeah, I've got this big black screen now. Great. Window capture, make that disappear. Fade back over. Good. Okay. Close the game settings window. Good. Publish your game. Go to File and Publish. File. Publish to Roblox. Done. Um, enter 
a name in the description, click create place. Okay, that's the part that I already did. Uh, a bar you will see 100% complete and the next button and then click the done button once you're done. All right, adding and moving parts. Uh, parts are building blocks, wait, parts are the building blocks of your game, of course. Uh, you can use them to build environments and models of your for your game. Add a part, so go to model, uh, and then it says to click on the down box, click on the small arrow below the part icon. Select the basic, uh, select the basic type that you want to create, block. Uh, block, sphere, wedge, or cylinder. The new part will appear in the exact center of the camera view where, it, where I'm looking. It didn't say anything else. Um, move the part. Now that you're here, select the move icon. Select the part and then on blah, 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 click on it in the game window. Use the camera controls that you learned earlier to get a good view. Oh, let's see here. That's that's a good view. Perfect. Like that. And then it says select the move tool. Done. And then drag the colored arrows to move your part around. Oh, I clicked it twice. There we go. So now we can move it on X, Z, or Y axis. Perfect. Or we can just dra drag it like that, which kind of works. All right. About collisions. Uh, in Roblox Studio, the collisions option lets you control if a part should be blocked from moving into each other. Into each other. Uh, if you set collision to on, you won't be able to move a part onto any any position where it overlaps another part. If you set collisions to off, you can freely move the part to anywhere in the world. To turn on and off collisions, click on the collisions button. Up here at the top, right here where it's highlighting, that's collisions. So collisions are on, collisions are off. So, right now, hold on. There we go, so it can't go into the center at all. Like, it won't let me collide. Now if I turn them off, it goes right through, no problem. It can, it can accommodate the same space that's already been taken up by a different part of the same space. That makes sense. Changing part snapping. All right, snapping is the amount the part will move, scale, rotate, at a time. For example, if you notice that your part move, uh, only moves in steps or rotates 45 degrees at a time, this is because of snapping. Snapping is useful for creating items that need to be placed exactly together like walls of a building. Change snap amount. To adjust the snap amount, simply enter the different numbers of for rotate or move and click on the small arrows or click on the small arrows in the fields. Uh, I explained this in yesterday's video as well. 45 degrees and one stud. We're gonna leave it at default for now. You can go smaller if you want to. Um, about studs. In Roblox, studs are a basic unit of, unit of measurement. In this image, um, okay, I'm not gonna show you the image. The white squares show blah, blah, blah. So basically this right here is a four by two um, thing. So if we scale it, cool. that's one by two. That's one by one, one by two, two by two, three by two, four by two. So length and width. All right, uh, turn off snapping. I'm not gonna do that. Create, creating the first jump. Uh, the obby is usually, the obby usually starts out with a simple jumping puzzle. As a good game designer, you will want to make it easy for new players to get started. If you make it too hard right away, players might just quit instead of continuing to play. Let's move the new part closer to the spawn location and create an easy jump. Okay, so I'm actually going to click on the move button like this. And looks like we're gonna go one over like that and boom like that. Now, this is something that they didn't say in there. Oh, well, never mind. It's gonna be the next part. Let's move the part in its spawn location and create an easy jump. Remember that if you press F, you can focus on the part. So if you press F, oops, press F, focus on the part. Yay, there's the part right there. Anchoring parts in space. If you play, I love this song. If you play your game at this point, you'll notice that the part that you've added or others uh, other than the spawn location will fall. Anchoring stops the part from falling. They'll even stay in place when players or other objects bump into them. To anchor a part, select the part and then click the anchor button. 
Oh, there's an actual like uh, thing right here. Boom, up here in this little group. So select the part, select anchor, done. You don't have to go to the properties. I was always going over here and, and looking at this part right here, but that's because like I'm used to this style. Anyhow, scaling and rotating the part. Change the size and the angle of the part. Uh, changing the size and the angle of the part lets you creatively design your obby and adjust the difficulty. So let's do rotation and rotate this 45 degrees, just like that. And I'm going to adjust it up to this like that. And then we're going to change the scale. Come here, just like that. Good. Okay. So, um, real quick, I'm just going to hit play. All right. Uh, so my spawn location, I'm facing that direction. I want to face that direction, wherever I'm first starting off at. So I'm just going to take this, hit the rotate button, and I'm going to turn it 90 degrees that direction. So now if I hit F5, I should spawn and face that direction. Sweet, there we go. So now I'm already playing my first obby. Yay, woo, okay, we'll hit stop. <laughs> oh gosh, <coughs> change the part size. Parts can be changed, can be resized along any axis. Select the scale tool, uh, select the part of your obby and drag the colored handles to any direction or in any direction. Rotate the part. Rotate the part works in a similar way. Select the rotate tool, drag the handles on the sphere to rotate in any axis. Done. If the part is scaling or rot oh, oh gosh, if the part is scaling or rotating in steps, you may need to adjust or turn off the snapping as noted earlier. If uh, the part is being blocked from moving, you will have to turn off the collisions. All right, finishing your first level. Don't jump, all right. One jump doesn't really make a fun obby, so let's add more. Using the tools that you've learned, add four to five new parts. Try creating different part types, like a cylinder or a wedge. Use the different sizes and rotations for variety. Remember that. Uh, remember to consistently check that your game, your game at all angles, parts might not line up the way that you think if you're not looking at it. If you're only looking at it from one direction. Okay, so that's fine. I am going to turn this from 45 down to 15. And then I'm going to rotate it a little bit more this direction so it's not so steep. There we go, just like that. Good. And now I'm going to add a new part. Just going to add a sphere here. We're going to scale that up quite a bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and it should just all sides. Now, if you just hold control, it'll do the opposite side from the center. Okay, maybe it's alt. Okay, not sure what's going on there. Anyway, maybe it's just with these parts. Hold shift. Nope, shift is all. Control, there we go. So, a sphere was a bad example, but if you hold control on this part, it does both sides at one time. All right, let's move this. We're gonna go back over to move. And I think if you hold control three, there we go, okay. So holding control and pressing one does the select button up here at the top. Control two does move, control three does scale, control four does rotate, and control five does, whoops, five does transform. We're not gonna get into transform just yet, but it's a very useful tool for later on. Let's go back over to the move and let's just conf continue on and finish out our parts. So there's, that's a little far away. And let's move, yeah, let's move much closer. In fact, I'm gonna go down some just like that. And then we're going to add a wedge and change its angle, rotate. We're gonna go just like that and scale control. Nope, just shift like that. And move. I'm gonna come across just like that. Good. Don't know if I'm gonna be able to make that. Oh well. I'm gonna use Control D and duplicate this. We're gonna change the scale right here and rotate. If you don't know what I did, basically there is another uh, wedge here. We're gonna move it out just like that, and then I'm going to scale it long ways, just like that. Perfect. 
And then let's add another part. Or no, no, let's add a cylinder. Oh, cylinder would be amazing. Can uh, hold shift and move just like that. Um, maybe. Can we make that jump? Yeah, we can make that jump. Absolutely. So. Okay. Four to five more pieces. Let's just add a, a part for the end. One last block. And come here, buddy. I'm going to actually scale this out. One, two. And then hold shift. There we go. And alt. Move this out and down some. So you got to do like a little jump off that into there. There we go. And let's hit F5 and test. Hopefully everything came together and... Oh, it stalled. No. Do you see that? Everything fell. And that's because we uh, went off new parts. Um, drag. Use the select tool. And then drag all those parts that we're missing. And hit the anchor button. Just like that. F5. Here we go. Hopefully I got them all. Yeah, I got them. Jump up here, jump over there, jump this. Yay. Really, code? Really? Okay. Okay. That's that's fine. It's perfectly fine. We're we're good. We are masters of obvious, except for the one that we just created, which is apparently is too intense for my level. There we go. Okay. Simple obby. Hit stop. And let's continue on. Remember to consistently check, oh, we already said that. Creating an end zone. At the end of your first jumping puzzle, make a larger landing area for your players to take uh, a break. Playtesting. That's what we just did. Playtesting is the process of testing the game to make sure that everything works and figuring out how to make it even better. Play the obby and play the obby now and test your design. Simply hit the play button. Uh, that's this right here. Boop. It's under the test and play. Or you can just hit test right there. And that's from any one of the tabs. Uh, if any of your parts you create fall down in the space, you probably didn't anchor them. Hey, I did that. Um, please review the section about anchoring parts in the space above. Um, play testing tips. Make sure that your game works. Uh, particularly change, uh, particularly changes you just made, of course. Um, look at look for areas that can be improved. If possible, ask your friends to play test the game as well. Sometimes a jump you think is easy will be difficult will be difficult for others. Good job! You've created a very basic obby and you've learned how to use your parts within Roblox. What's next? We encourage you to follow the tutorials below, which will help you to make your obby even more amazing. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can also check Roblox blog, the developer forms, and the announce uh, for announcements about new features and upcoming changes to the to Roblox. Wow, I cannot talk tonight. Um, the three that they suggest to continue on is making your obby colorful, building hinges and turning platforms, and creating traps and pickups. So if you want to follow all along, go go ahead. Absolutely, I'm going to take off on this particular video and call it done. Um, and we will be continuing on. So the reason we had to do this one was so we could do the next one and the one after that. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. Do all those cool things I'm supposed to call out at the end as an awesome YouTuber is supposed to. And as always, I love you guys very much. Have a great night, and we'll talk to you very soon. That was 23 minutes way past the time I meant. <gasps> Outro! Thank you.